previously on the Random Review Show. And now on the Random Review Show. Science has chosen you for a little experiment. In an act of generosity, I have given you a robot arm. Please be so kind as to pluck yourself in. And if I don't? No, no, anything can happen. No, no, I'll do what you want. No. Just press the spot when you're ready. Very well, we can proceed. Greetings, my loyal students. Today, I have another interesting catch for you. Yes, I know, experimenting on human beings other than first year psychology is not allowed. But, ha, whatever. How else will you learn, right? At first, the subject is introduced gently to the game mechanics. A relatively safe environment allowing the player to get the hang of the controls and how to interact with stuff. As you notice, the environment is peaceful and brings a sense of normality. When you are looking at other horror media, you can see that they also present this tranquil, peaceful scene at first to give you a sense of what the environment is supposed to be like. That the following events are not normal. A calm before the storm. After the subject has made an obligatory mess with the game physics, he proceeds with the game proper. Triggering a cutscene and dramatic shift in environment. After leaving the ship, the player has to proceed through the hostile environment, eventually coming to a mysterious hatch in the ground. Not sure if there's ever been a non-mysterious hatch in the ground. Hmm.
After opening the hatch and finding a hidden passage, the player ends up in a small chamber with an empty- <laughs> HOLY SHIT! <laughs> <coughs> well, a simple jump scare that might have been, it sets up a much more clever and atmospheric form of fear as well. You see, as the subject explores the nearby area, he discovers that the only route is to take through the sealed doorway. No matter how careful and cautious the player is, they are forced to put themselves into danger. You will also see with this example that horror games can and has to do things different from a movie. We all know how lame jump scares are in movies, but in a game, oh yes, bring it on! I will come back to this point later. The horror in a horror game lays in the sense of control. How often have you thought to yourself, I would never do that in a horror movie? Because let's be obvious, characters in horror movies are stupid. They die easily. You see if Claire left her house this morning. What's going on? Why the other? Just get back inside and wait until... <laughs> They go into places they shouldn't go. They split up. Wait here. Yes, you go down the dark hallway alone, and I'll wait here in the dark room alone. And they forget about modern technology. Although. So, how many times have you seen the killer being incapacitated and the characters not killing them? Say what you want for pacifism, but I think even Buddhists will make an exception for Leatherface. This is different with a horror game. You are the character, and thus your survival depends on your actions. How clever you are, how well you can aim, how quickly you can run. With a movie or with TV, you just leave it going. You are passively sitting there, eating your popcorn while a character gets mercilessly slaughtered. What do you care, after all? You have no control over it anyway. But with a game, oh yes! You have to move forward if you want to experience the story. You have to push the action button, even though you know that there's something behind that door. Anyway, let's move on. Soon after, the game teaches you how to crouch and hide, showing the player how to be cautious, not to be seen, effectively saying danger is out there even though you can't see it just yet. The subject proceeds into a small set of passages connecting the rooms, and just when the player might be getting comfortable with navigating them, the first enemies show up. <laughs> On one hand, it is sad that these are rather generic zombie dogs we see time and time again in horror games. How much is that dog in the window? The one with the waggly tail. How much is that dog in the window? I do hope that dog is for sale. When I had to create a zombie creature for my high school project, I was much more creative. <coughs> On the other hand, the way they are presented, the way they patrol around and the way you have pretty much no hope of escape once they see you, works very effectively. 
The feeling of fear you get when you're crouching behind the crate, watching them come towards you and begging them to turn around and go the other way. It's pretty intense and a credit to the game's direction. Sure, when you die, you can reload. But in a way, all you are doing is putting yourself back as bait for the dogs. You will die and die again until you finally escape the fear, only to venture on until you experience the very same moment again. But until then, you are at the mercy of your skills and pray that the creatures won't see you. But it begs the question, why would we keep on doing this to ourselves? Maybe gamers aren't crazy. Within Penumbra, the majority of the story is told through writing and scribblings people have left behind. The only living things you encounter are there to harm you. Just like in real life. Some of the storytelling can be pretty disturbing indeed, and all the more effective for not seeing it directly. Again, much fear is produced. And while it's a gruesome image, what is gruesome is not the image itself. We've seen plenty of games where one is harassed by disturbing images all the time, but it's the fact that we know why it happened. Hardly ever there's an explanation. Some will argue that explaining it takes away the suspense. I'd say I would love and fear to know why a creature happens to have tentacles growing out of its vagina. What would be the evolutionary advantage of that? The game continues, slowly unraveling a simple yet increasingly disturbing tale. You're effectively following behind someone else in the environment, learning slowly the story as you do. This increases your own sense of fear from the scenario, while keeping you in control. Before we move on, I would like to make a small distinction between horror games and horror-themed games. A horror-themed game is a game that merely uses horrific imagery. There are corpses, dead things walking, horribly looking monsters waiting to kill you. But they're missing something essential that separate them from the true horror games. A sense of true dread. Dread is when you know your character will perish for its curiosity. Dread is when there is a loud banging noise on the door, but it's the only entrance. Dread is knowing worse things are to come, but you will have to press forward anyway. This means that a truly horrific game doesn't need to be about zombies or serial killers. One of the games I've played recently with a large amount of Fuzzy Dread is The World Ends With You, a game with happy, cheerful graphics, characters and little violence, but with events that are so disturbing on so many different levels. But what ultimately defines Dread is that if you want to go on with the game, you have to force your character in a worse and worse situation, and as a player, you experience a certain reluctance to go on. You are in a sense in control of what happens to your character by merely pushing forward. You are responsible for your character's danger and horror. And in some cases, you are what's driving your characters insane. You are what ultimately dooms your character. Who pushes your character to do horrible acts and experience horrible things. Every single bit of suffering of the character is your fault. By the mere virtue of you playing the game. You. Sick bastard. I 
subject here, of course, is now a few hours in and has already produced enough fear to be equivalent to 20 cups of coffee. Of course, as everyone with an even vague understanding of science knows, fear, in its liquid form, is coffee. That is why they both produce shaking. Eventually our subject gains the ability to realistically fight back. Not via weapons, as traditional weapons aren't present in the game, but by the use of the environment against the enemies. Carefully setting up a trap and luring the enemies in what's clearly a satisfying experience for the subject. Die, die, you die, die. Their sense of control die, is reinforced, die, die, and thus their die, connection die, with die, the game die, world is die, well. die, 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 die. Die, 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 die. Sadly, die. this game die. ruins this, as die. either by glitch or by design, the enemies respawn, breaking pretty good realism that was consistent so far. While the first time the dog reappears might supply a sense of shock, the fear is reduced overall as the realism goes down along with the sense of skill or achievement the player has. Had the creators made sure that these creatures would respawn, you could do all sorts of interesting things to the player. After all, the player doesn't know there may or may not be more. You could lull them into a false sense of security and BAM! It turns out one survived. Or maybe the player had trapped them all of them, but you make sure that there are enough clues left to leave them in a fear for more. With this respawn, the dog is no longer a challenge to overcome, but a nuisance. Something in the way of the goal, but it doesn't make you think. And so it becomes a horror-themed game, where enemies are nothing more than a recipient for your ammo. Eventually our subject encounters different enemies, but there are many ways playing second fiddle to the environmental dangers. And, perhaps to a greater extent, the dangers dreamt up in the player's head. The game gives just enough real danger, but not more, to constantly put you on edge, even if there's nothing there. This is where the horror game separates itself from the horror-themed game. What you'll find with horror-themed games is, is that all they do is copy techniques from, well mostly, bad horror movies. Jump scares, annoying shrieking violence, and of course, gross visuals. Not so with the true horror game. They don't just look at movies for techniques, they also make full use of the medium, rather than pretending they're a movie. Even the earlier survival horror game, Alone in the Dark, like to mess around with your mind by, for example, occasionally having the action music swell up when there was nothing actually going on. You can't do that in a movie, not without ending it in a, well, you guess, a jump scare. Many horror movies also have protagonists that see things that aren't really there. We know this because there's always something obvious, like a visual cue or a change of atmosphere or a camera angle that gives it away. And let's be frank, who has ever felt any suspense or things the protagonist might see? Eternal Darkness, however, has become famous for its sanity effects, which are exactly the protagonist hallucinating. But this time it works, because you are the protagonist, by proxy, and because it frequently makes you unsure whether what you're seeing is an hallucination or real fear you have to respond to. Because you aren't sure of what's fake or real, you get the right amount of paranoia. With a movie, the audience always know what's real, mostly due to cliché directing though. The other thing might be that with a film, when something turns out not to be real, you feel cheated. With a game, you actually feel relieved.
As the subject approaches the end of the game, there is a natural build-up to climax, with greater dangers and seemingly slimming chance of survival. The fear being produced by this completely simulated safe video game is quite impressive. Fortunately, I already have what I really need. <laughs> In stereo, the my beloved in the total darkness. This got me happening! they found any of those purple fruit we got a while back oh yeah yeah you like those those were awful oh yeah they tasted terrible mm. so why do you ask why am i always the last one to know what were they good for <laughs> hey did you see that no no you can't just change the subject no seriously look something moved out there there Is it? We're going home.